weeks, I've done a lot of talking about how important it is to raise uh, for hardworking Oregonians to get a much needed raise in order to keep up with the rising costs of housing, rent, food, and other necessities. Today, I am so pleased to be able to demonstrate with two real world examples how raising the minimum wage will have a positive impact on the lives of Oregonians. First, I'd like to introduce you to Casile Capriel. She moved here from Micronesia eight years ago. Like so many, she came here in search of a better life. And that means a good job to help her provide for her three children. She found that job at PDX as a passenger service agent, essentially helping flyers get where they need to go. Every day, she gives it her all. But at 9.25 an hour, it's not enough. In the last two years, her rent has gone up three times. Last year, it went up by $100. What's er worse, her hours were cut around the same time. Every time she gets ahead a little bit, another barrier gets in her way. Today, we are signing a bill that gets her a little closer to the American dream. It means that just an extra $15 or $20 a week starting in July. But for this mom of three, there are months where that small amount will make a difference. Thank you, Casile, for being here today and allowing me to share your story. Next, I'm pleased to introduce John Statner. John is one of the founders of First Call Resolution, a call center and contracted services company based out of Roseburg. He operates locations in Grants Pass, Coos Bay, Vanita, Eugene, Independence, and even Seattle. The company started in 2005, has grown every year since, and has almost tripled in size in the last three years. He employs almost 1,500 people. With a workforce that size, he was worried when he first saw the proposed ballot measures to raise the minimum wage. He was concerned that they raised wages too quickly for his businesses to accommodate. At the same time, he also understood that the cost of living was rising fast, and Oregonians, including his employees, were not always able to make ends meet. John says the solution pre presented to us today strikes the reasonable balance he was looking for, a sensible plan to increase the minimum wage that would allow his business to continue to grow while pay paying his employees above minimum wage with regular wages as they gain experience. As governor, and I want to say thank you, John, for being here. As governor, I'm extremely proud of the collaborative spirit of the stakeholder groups that work to develop this legislation. Oregon has not only avoided a number of potentially problematic ballot measures, we have taken a very smart approach by implementing the raise in a way that makes sense for workers and for businesses, no matter where in Oregon they are. I know that neither the Senate President or the Speaker could join us this morning. I would like to give them a thank you as well. <laughs> and to many of the organizations that are here, I'm just so very proud of you uh, for your collaborative efforts uh, on this bill. And I'm so pleased to sign a bill that represents the innovative and collaborative spirit of Oregon. <coughs> Next, I am very pleased to turn it over to our very own Senator Michael Dembro.